Rahim. My name is Jalen Green, and I am with the Nocturnal, and I'm just very grateful to be talking to you right now. How are you feeling? I'm feeling good. How are you? I'm pretty good. I'm pretty good. So mm -hmm. we're, we're going to get right into it. Um, we're here to talk about that new EP. I actually had a chance to listen to it, and I think it is absolutely amazing. It was very nostalgic for me, and um, I was very curious if that was maybe um your inspiration a little bit because it, it kind of reminded me of just like being in the car with my parents and hearing the quiet storm kind of how some of the songs would like go into each other so which 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 ep are we talking about is that are we talking about the winner of love or are we talking about the, fall in love the winner in love oh when so you so you have winner in love that means you you're part of my exclusive catalog club mm -hmm. technically thanks <laughs> that's that's pretty that's pretty awesome yeah i mean um Hopefully, since the since the beginning of even you know even the beginning of my career, uh, you know the music lovers have noticed that I like that I, I'm very meticulous about the track listing or the flow of, of the flow of the music, and I think I think that that that's from listening to, in particular, it's from it's it's the feeling I used to get like from listening to like a Jodeci album in particular like. It, there was a nostalgia where, where they always knew what what slow songs to put behind one another, you know what I mean? So 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 much that like it didn't mean that the fact that the up tempo songs weren't good. It's just that the the slow songs were just like they, they were bad. You know, I, me I I was I was I was uh, easily swayed by the ballads. You know what I mean? Like they were just such uh, incredible balladeers and. Um, vocalists and finisher, you know, Casey and JoJo, like finishers, you know, um, um, as well as like, you know, um, the spin, uh, lead singer from the Spinners. Um, uh, it's a couple of great song finishers, you know, that they, like when they get to that, when, like when you're coming out of that bridge and they just take it home, you know, uh, um, uh, Cisco from, you know, Cisco, also jazz, you know, uh, you know, from Drew Hill great finishes when it comes, you know, uh, of a song, you know, uh, just take it home and where they, where they embody something that makes you want to re rewind it. That's one. And is this something about um, the playlist, AKA the laylist as I like to call it, where you can just like lay down, zone out, you know, whether you just, um, just enjoying, just having a music appreciation day or, you know, laying with your significant other, you know, in a moment of intimacy, like you don't have to like, grab the phone, grab the iPhone and say, Siri, play Raheem Devon. It just, you know, it just flows. No, for sure. Yeah. And um, I think it was definitely like a classic and something, you know, you want to just like play while you're like in the kitchen or like mm -hmm. in the house. Like that rendition of Love Ballad was absolutely amazing. I was curious as to why you wanted to put that on this project. Well, you know, I, I, I recently uh, performed a few months back at the Black Music Honors um, and, uh, you know, the Love Ballad, I did the Jeffrey Osborne tribute along with um, Dave Hollister and Kenny Lattimore, you know, and LTD Love Ballad was my, uh, was my song that I was assigned. That was my assignment, Thanks. you know, and uh, so I, so, so, so initially I, I said, hey, you know, I'm going to, after the response, you know, when, when it, when it, you know, when it aired the television, I said, I, you know, I think let me, I'm gonna give it a shot and give it a crack. It just made sense. You know, people saw me performing it live on television and, uh, you know, me being a fan of Jeffrey Osborne. I grew up on that record, you know, so there's, there's a nostalgia to it. And I enjoy doing the remakes and finding a way to, to take, to take, to not um, taint what the listeners used to. But, but, you know, at the same token, figuring out like cool ways to make it mine or like own it in this day and time, you know, in this version of what I do. Absolutely. Was uh, Retrograde, was that also rendition too? Because it sounded like uh, James Blake. Oh, that's definitely, yeah, that's definitely a James Blake remake. Absolutely. You know, uh, which, which I feel like went over people's heads a few times. I, you know, I've reached, I, re I released that originally as a mixtape record um, some years ago on one of my mixtapes. Um, then I, then I, then I added strings to it. Uh, it was part of, uh, my, from Lust to Dawn project that came out in 2019. Uh, but I just felt like it just, you know, with the even situation and, um, it just fit, it just fit the storyline of what, what I was, you know, the nostalgia, what I was going to create, you know, with this new project, 
Um, even that, even to being an exclusive release, like I wanted to bump, I wanted to have a good vibe to it. I wanted to be one of those things that, you know, um, people, it's so good that people don't want to keep it to themselves and they spread the word about, you know, the platform and the fact that like, the fact that it's not available on any other DSPs um, besides, you know, the even platform whom I partnered up with, you know, I get 80% of the revenue, you know, um, they get 20 uh, it's, 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 it's already been proven to be a, a very successful business model for me as an independent artist and as somebody who, who really appreciates the, you know, um, the fans that buy the art from the artist, you know, that that's the movement moving forward by the art from the artist. I haven't been ex so excited about, I think, ever putting out an album, like since, you know, maybe my first album, but it's like, you know, the, the opportunity is like, wow, 20 years, 20 years later, I have an opportunity to, to not only get up close and personal with the fans and um, gift them like really cool things for supporting. Uh, but they, they actually buy the music again. It's like, it's amazing to me. Yeah. And that's absolutely important. I think that's really cool that you're doing that. And speaking of that, when people buy the album, I saw that, is there, um, you know, an opportunity that they get to speak to you? Can you, can you talk about that a little bit? Oh, abs absolutely. Like in fact, um, we've been letting it brew. I wanted to, I wanted to let it brew for about a week and it has, it's been about a week now. Uh, in fact, it was last Wednesday. I think it was the 13th and then being today is Thursday. So the call has went in. I actually, my top 10 supporters, I have a, the, the list of who they are. And I just, I literally, before we had, before we jumped on, uh, for the Zoom, you know, reached out to my staff and, and 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 my people over at Even to say, hey, like, give me give me the addresses, um, give me the phone numbers. Um, I'm gonna some, some there's gonna be some lucky ladies that's gonna get some roses, you know, for me in the, in the next few days. Um, you know, it, it's really organic uh, what we're doing in terms of people who want. Um, you know, there's a, it's a raffle, you know what I mean? So it's, you know, it's like the lottery and it's really cool and it keeps people engaged. Um, there'll be some people that I pick as well for for at least 18 people will be picked, um, you know, during this legacy tour situation. Uh, 18 at the most, you know what I mean? Um, I, I would love to try to navigate to hopefully find somebody in every city that supported me on even, um, you know, with this first release of buying from the art, buying direct from the artist. Um, you know, with a, with a way of saying thank you and like surprising some people like, hey, it's why I Devon, you want tickets to the show. I'll be, you know, in your city in two days. Here's the protocol. Here's who you chime in with. And I look forward to meeting you at the meeting greet, you know, so real cool stuff. Yeah, that's so cool. How cool is that to be going on tour with Legacy? She's absolutely amazing. Awesome. She is definitely absolutely amazing. Um, this is not our first time touring together, uh, you know, and uh, so I'm, I'm looking forward to it. We spoke, we spoke yesterday. Uh, a few days ago, and we're both excited and just, you know, um, navigating through selling these tickets in these different cities and just, you know, the climate of, of, of where things are. And um, yeah, I think we're going to, I think the tour is going to do amazing. Are you going to perform some of the new songs from this EP? On the tour? Maybe, maybe, maybe. You know, the only way to find out is to get your <laughs> tickets at Ticketmaster.com, of course, or Lettucey.com or whatever your outlets are for getting, you know, buying your concert tickets. Nice. And this EP, it has eight tracks, and another song that really stood out to me was Swing My Way. I thought okay. the song was just so smooth, like very soulful, just made yeah. you want to lay back. Can you talk about that a little bit? It's definitely one of my favorites. You know, um, the cool thing is that although the entire body of work, I don't think will be available on DSPs anytime soon, um, you know, meaning all the digital, typical digital streaming platforms, um, I may release a single or two, you know what I mean, just to heat things up a bit. Um, and make it interesting. Uh, and that'll allow me to still keep it as exclusive content, you know, over at even.biz and for it to, you know, my, be, be able to be monetized. Again, it's, a, it's an amazing thing to, to see the fans one by one, you know, starting out with the first person. And now, you know, I'm over 200 people strong. And, and it may sound like, you know, for somebody who has, you know, 1.7 followers, 1.7 million followers on Facebook and just reached 400K, you know, on Instagram, it may not, it may seem that like 200 is not a lot, but it's actually a lot of, that, that when you're building it person by person and just like, you know, people, they, they, people may have their reluctancy or they may say, okay, well, why, why is it three options of pricing or just, you know, just kind of understanding what it is uh, because it's been so long. It's I probably, that some of these people have like actually paid and purchased music, you know, everything is so subscription based and, um, and I'm not, you know, anti DSPs, but, 
you know, uh, I, I do believe in working smarter, not harder. You know what I mean? And I think that, you know, the the, the, the danger in the subscription based uh, movement is that, you know, you just pay one fee a month and then it's just like there's so much work that's in, that, 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 that it involves and entails. And you don't know if it's going to be appreciated and just like, you know, so I, I you know, for me. I'd rather bet on the people than bet on bet, bet on the the structure of how things are now, you know, and uh, and still be able to utilize that business model when I need it as well. Absolutely, I think everything that you're doing is is the, the right direction for sure. Thank you. Um, I think I want to get into the the writing process a little bit. I'm okay. also fascinated with artists um, and their writing process because I don't think people realize how um, it's not easy to tell a story, especially through music, and I think you did that. Very, very well in winter. Thank you. Um, I mean, my writing process is that I don't write. <laughs> yeah, I don't. I, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of like the singer that. I guess you know. I've heard. Um, you know, we, I think as we've all heard about Jay Z's creative process or Tupac or, you know what I mean. Um, yeah, my process is definitely unorthodox, and there's a method to the badness. You know, I kind of describe it as, you know downloads in real time and just like going there on a vibe and you know sometimes I know exactly um what I want to say and I'm just trying to figure out how to say it and convey it sometimes I go in there with a, spe a specific title you know um or a hook in mind um and I've been try I have been challenging myself to like literally write things down or I I'll write a hook in my in my phone or something will like come to me and I'll be like yeah that that's it, you know what I mean? Um, and that and that's happened uh, recently, you know, just to kind of just, uh, you know, I believe the iron sharpens iron, and, you know, um, outside of working with like other songwriters and stuff like that, it's ways to like mentally challenge myself to just stay on my one, two, you know? Yeah, that's really cool. Cause you kind of just like go in there and it's just like a feeling and you like produce something. Yeah. So cool. I don't think people realize, like you mentioned, like Jay-Z yourself, like that's not easy to do at all. And I, you know, and during COVID, I, you know, for a long time, I didn't think, you know, people probably don't believe it until they see it. So it's one thing to hear about this, another thing to be with me on the IG live for like three hours and like see it, like see, hear, the, hear me put on a beat, tell the engineer to cut the, cut the mic on. It's just me and him in there. And then, you know, after the session, or like the song's done. You know, the Instagram shots, we've been on so long and it counts down and I have to start it over again. And I'm just like, yo, like, yeah, I'm gonna let y'all hit us through the big speakers and it's just be a vibe, like a bop. You know what I mean? It's just, uh, there was a time where I probably would have been reluctant to show the process, but, you know, um, in fear of anything, you know, but now it's like no fear and just like showing the process and I, who knows how many artists I'm out there inspiring or just like showing them like certain formulas and techniques and ways that they can do to record as well, you know? So I'm, I'm definitely in the each one, teach one stage um, and passing down, you know, the jewels. Yeah, absolutely. There's definitely beauty in the process. Even, you know, people outside of music, you could be inspiring just the, to see like maybe no possible struggles, like in a, a different yeah. industry can inspire. Yeah. I'm always inspired by people. So I think that's really cool that you're doing that. Yeah, and, I, and, 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 and and even the imperfections in it, or like when I hit a bad note, or just like you see me singing something over like literally 20 times in some cases because there's a certain emotion or you might not get it or you can't, you kind of hear bits and pieces of me putting it together and, and the layering and you're like, but then when you hear it like through the speakers, you know, when you go in the, when you go in the big room, it's like, yo, like this is incredible. Like I just saw you know, part is, you know, even with the track listings and the songs that were, uh, you know, on the winner of love, like my Instagram followers were like, uh, you know, my social media followers were in on that process in terms of like, yeah, we want that song. Oh, yeah, we want that song. You know what I mean? So it was it was pretty cool. Like I let them put that together, you know, uh, through, while, while, while on IG Live and kind of giving them the option and stuff like that. Yeah. yeah. And it probably makes them feel involved too with your craft, which is fun. Oh, absolutely, you know, it's the process. You know, the more the more you are engaging um, these days, the more successful you are as an artist. Absolutely. And is there anything else about like winter in love that you really uh, hope it makes people feel a certain way? Yeah, just I mean, for me, it's it's, it's probably my greatest 
project yet. Not just only musically, because it's a bold statement. You know what I mean? And it's me taking taking ownership of my intellectual property. You know what I mean? So, you know, I, I pride myself in never giving the world, uh, you know, eight eight tracks or seven tracks of jump. You know what I mean? Like, I feel like I'm getting better, you know, as a, as a vocalist, as a songwriter, and, you know, as a curator of art uh, and the art form of music and soul and R&B. And um, I'm going to do my part, you know, and, and all I need my support is to do is to go support like you know what I mean I think the biggest thing I would want to just like remind people hey this is an exclusive release you know when you go over to even.biz and you, and you support this project um, you become you become part of my ex exclusive catalog club none of these songs will be available on Spotify, Apple Music, Pandora um, you know unless it maybe as a single you know, you know what I mean but like right now um, I'm enjoying the fact that people have to go look and find find the music. It kind of reminds me of like, you know, when we would go to record record stores and go and go look for things and be on the, on the shelf, you know. So um, it's just everything is kind of like I guess you could say virtual in a, to a certain extent. Yeah, like I said, overall the the EP was very nostalgic for me. So you even saying that is just bringing all yeah. this back. Yeah, it's really really cool. Yeah. Um, I do have to ask my last question. Um, uh -huh. You have this really cool EP out. You're about to go on tour with Lettucey. Is there mm -hmm. anything else that people can look out for that you're working on that you can share? Abs absolutely. I've been wrapping up Tanya Nolan's project. Um, a dope artist out of uh, Houston, Texas. She's independent like me. You know, I've taken her under my wing. And just like, you know, um, heard a request of like our mutual acquaintance, uh, Corey Moe. He said, yo, man, you know, show Tanya the game, help her out. You know, that type of thing. So she's bossed up and, you know, brought me in to kind of just like not even hold her hand, just but just be be supportive, you know what I'm saying, as a fellow artist and uh, allowing allowing herself to be the clay um, and, and allowing me to be the vessel to, to for her creativity. It's been a great thing. I'm in a, I'm in a good space where I like really enjoy doing that and going in the studio and pushing people um, gently and delicately, but also, um, you know, uh, I want to say aggressively, but assertively. You know what I mean? It's like, yo, I'm not going to take a note for an answer. I know that you can hit that note. You know what I mean? I know you got it in you. So, but, you know, we've had moments where she's in the studio and it's just like, she literally like kind of just burst out into tears of joy. Like, yo, this is crazy. Like, but you got me sounding like this, you know? And it's, you know, and it's just to kind of just like show her like the voices, you know, it's an ever growing, evolving instrument within herself. Uh, she has a new single out called Honey. Um, um, of course, you know, uh, Pace Yourself was a big record for us. It's a duet, uh, or, you know, last year, uh, produced by Corey Mo. Um, there was another record, Let's Celebrate. It was produced by the colleagues. It was an up tempo vibe, you know, roller skating ring vibe. Um, and uh, yeah, so so Tanya Nolan, that's coming. I just wrapped up a project on, on, on a young lady by the name of Granique, who's out of DC originally, uh, also down in Houston, down in Atlanta right now. Excuse me. Shout out to Granique. Uh, she has a she has a project that's dropping at some point this year. That's a Raheem Devon presents project. Um, when butterflies become unicorns, you know what I'm saying? Uh, is the name of her project. Uh, shout out to Brendan McKinney out of Houston, Texas. You know, I, I got a project coming out with her as well. She's she's a phenomenal uh, artist, and she has some independent. She's been in the indie for some time. She just dropped a project, so you know, go check out Brendan McKinney. Go check out Granique absolutely check out Tanya Nolan uh, doing her thing um, I got some stuff going with Jay Brown who just had a number one record yeah so shout out to Jay Brown I just joined he just brought me out um, as his Brooklyn show um, you know he's on a tour with the Shindellas as, as well as uh, October London you know, we, we had a chance to connect and we've been talking about working as well so just, just I've been looking to connect with the newer artists you know the, the vibes you know the next voices of, of tomorrow and, and, and they got next now you know what I mean yeah, that is awesome. So we have a lot to look forward to. Absolutely. It's a lot. Of, it's a lot. It's always more music on the way. Uh, like I said, Tanya's new single, uh, Honey, is out, written by me, uh, produced by the colleagues. Um, I, I got a new single out with, co with the colleagues as well, Love Me Down, which is like an Afro beats kind of vibe. Um, we've kind of verbally committed to doing an Afro beats project. So uh, I'm gonna figure, I got to figure out when I'm going to be able to have time to record that, maybe I'll start it on the road or something during the tour. But uh, yeah, just, just keeping myself busy. I'm back in love with music. I feel like I'm in my season, the, the re reinvention of, of, of Raheem Devon and, uh, 
And uh, I'm, I'm so appreciative to you and the platform. And of course, the people that are going to be checking this out. Buy the art from the artist. I'm telling you, I'm here for you. I got whatever you need. I'm going to keep them coming too. I'm going to keep them coming. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, congratulations again. That is absolutely amazing. I wish you the best. Congrats. Yeah on your EP as well as this tour coming up and yeah thank you for talking to me I really really appreciate it thank you so much thank you for your platform look forward to doing it again peace and love